Hello and welcome back to another review with me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. This week I've got something a little bit different. This is Carn Moore's Glenord Porta Cask Finish. So what this has been finished in is a Porta Cask from these guys here, Wasted Degrees. So I've got a wee can, I've not opened it yet, but I want to try and I've got a wee glass here to pour it in to see the difference in colour. So this is a cast strength. At 54.8% ABV, 420 bottles, and it was bottled in 2023. So this is Glenord Distillery, a Northern Highlands distillery owned by Diageo. So they're kind of known, the Glenord stuff, you'll maybe see Singleton of Glenord, which is the kind of biggest name from it. They are predominantly known for having a nice, soft, easy sipping whiskey. So if you ever try Singleton and things like that, you know it's a nice, easy sipping dram. To add a porter cask in there to give it an, a lift or something completely different, a different style. This is going to be my first time trying this, even though the bottle's there. I have to, my friend uh, Graham has let me loan me this bottle, so I'll make sure I don't go too, through too much of it. So it's 10 years old. Um, 2012 is when it was um, distilled and then it was bottled in this year, 2023. So you think that would still be 11 years, but it's probably not made its way through to the day of... The, the distilled date. Nine years in bourbon and then one year maturing in these wasted degrees porter casks. So it's getting the colour. What I've been able to bring here as well is the actual 2012 10 year old Glenord bourbon barrel. So I wanted to bring these side by side to show you the colour difference and what one year a porter cask does with this one that we're trying today and what the full bourbon maturation does for 10 years in the Glenord. So I don't really know what to expect. I'm not a huge porter drinker. I don't really drink porters and, and darker beers. I very rarely have a Guinness. I like IPAs and things like that. So this could be quite different for me. But I thought I'd try to do a wee bit and put a bit of everything together. So what I'll do first is I'll get this on the nose. We'll talk a wee bit about Carn Moore and um, Morrison Distillers, who have Abaragi, an Abaragi distillery, which was founded again in 2017. So they are due to have their single malt coming out within the next few years. They can legally be called whiskey just now, but I think they're holding back until they find that perfect um, perfect point to release, which I'm fine with because I'm loving the Carmore range that they're bringing to us, the Old Perth range. They've got so much different, amazing style whiskey out there. I like the bottles. Um, I think this is... One of the nicest when they were probably the nicest upgrade, I think, from previously. I think I've said that in previous videos with Carnmore when they decided to go from the kind of standard, traditional, simplistic bottle. They've upgraded to a kind of thicker, nicer bottle. So I'm a big fan of that. Now I'm going to get this on the nose. As I say, it's cast strength, 54.8% ABV. One year finishing a porter cask. And I think I can smell a wee bit from here. So it's going to have a lot going on, I think. I think you can still kind of get the Glenord, the bourbon notes coming through. There's a kind of toasty chocolate in the background as well. But there's honey, honeycomb, toasty chocolate. It's like a, um, there's an orange note, but not like full citrus, like an orange jam, marmalade or, um, maybe like an orange sauce or something. It's not like a, a, um, a sharp orange, it's more that kind of softer, kind of looking down, a, a, a jam, orange, marmalade, I would maybe say sauce. The honey's coming through, a wee bit of kind of, as I said, toasty chocolate or something. There's not much more I can get from that just now. I'm going to try it on the palate, then I'm going to open the beer, I'm going to pour that in just to see what the colour is and how much that's taken over. But it's a nice nose. The ABV, I think it's hidden quite well in there. Well, let's see what we get in the palate here. It's land your room. I think those kind of chocolate notes stay. I'm sure there's a kind of real 
rich chocolate note that comes through the honey from that like say maybe the bourbon cast from the nine years in there is definitely still staying prominent honey as well what else That's nice. Right, I'm going to open this. So these guys are from Blair Aftel, and I think it was just a wee, out one day and they've had a wee joke saying, oh, we should take a cask off and we'll fill it. And I think it just came to fruition and they've made this. So let's pour it in here. This glass, uh, this glass here was gifted to me by my friend Drew. So Drew, thank you for this. Wow, right, okay. I'll just fill it up, because I'll... So the colour is definitely, can't see through it, and that is what Porter looks like from the Outlaw 1899 Stout is what we've got here from Wasted Degrees, so it's pretty dark. And on the nose on this, there's definitely a kind of chocolatey note I'm getting from that, a little bit kind of hoppy or barley. This is very fresh as well, it's clean. <laughs> the nose is just, I think there's definitely a mixture of the bourbon cask and those porter cask. But there's that orange, there's just a, it's a weird orange, a nice orange that's coming through. A couple of drops of water, see what that does if it opens us up anyway. I can't get away from that chocolate, you know. Honeyed, orange, fresh, clean barley. It's just weird because you can't get that ABV in there. 428 bottles, as I said, a Highland whiskey. And the colour of it's great. Very good mouthfeel. There is no alcohol burn at the end, and I think that's from looking at this here, of how thick this is, and from that cask, a lot of that flavour is absorbed out from that colour from one year. It's absorbed and taken over the bourbon cask, and just giving us a little avenue into to somewhere different. But rich chocolate kicking about in there, honey. Orange sauce or orange something, but not too tangy, just a hint coming through in softer and a softer note. There is that kind of Highland heather as well. It's it's very soft for the ABV and I can't really get my head around that. I would say there's a kind of a hay field or a bay, you know, it's just... Um, It's literally just been dried out hay. Really, if you've cut your grass and things, you've just let it sit. It starts to dry. You get that kind of that note there coming through. I really like this. I think this is very different, very quirky. That's magic. Now, I'm going to try this to see the difference in what this does to to this. If there's any notes, but see, there's deep chocolate in there. There's kind of toasted notes. Is that toasted chocolate? That's really rich, that's got a kind of just dark coffee note to it. I don't get the dark coffee in this because I think the bourbon cast, the bourbon barrel has definitely given that softer honeyed notes to it. But I think this is one I need to go and sit back and have a little bit more of. So Graham, thank you very much. I'll try and not drink as much of it, but um, I enjoy this. I think this is something different. I think if you're looking for something slightly different, but having nice, easy going flavours to it, if you like something cast strength but you don't like an alcohol burn, then this is the one to kind of go for, something there. I think you're talking about between 60 and 70 pounds a bottle. As I say, it's, we've got a wee fruit fly um, joining us here as well. 
can see them. But I'm going to go and sit back. I'm going to go and try and dissect this a little bit more um, before this fly does. I like it. I don't absolutely love it, but I like it. Um, I think because I struggle with stout casks, that's it. I'll maybe do a wee review on this next to do the the comparison of just what the bourbon casks is. Probably should have done it the other way about, to be honest. But I'll go and sit back, I'll go and finish this, I'll maybe pour another wee one and try and get to know it a little bit better. But very enjoyable, a little bit different, a little bit quirky, nice, easy notes to it. And I can't get away from that toasty, chocolatey, orange and marmalade note from it. Good whiskey, I enjoy it. So I'm going to go and sit back, I'm going to relax, and I'm going to debrief with this fruit fly. But again, thanks everyone for commenting, thanks everyone for liking, subscribing. If you've not done so, feel free to subscribe. Um, and I'll be back next week. So, as always, I've been Kim, Kim Gantle Whiskey. Join me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Sounds.